Hey guys, welcome to the show. Today, I'm gonna be trying to figure out what's going wrong with my computer. I've got this mini PC and I'm using it as a firewall PF sense. However, every now and then, when I'm downloading a heavy file on my Windows computer, it doesn't happen on my Mac, every now and then, it stalls PF sense. And I have no idea what's going on, so I've been Googling around trying to figure it out. A lot of people say that it's probably related to the memory. So I I'm trying to find out if it is related to the memory. So I'm using the software, it's called Memtest86. There's two versions of the software. There's the official one by Passmark, and there's the official open source version, which was forked from this project, and it's currently maintained. I'm using the official official one just to make sure it's good. And what you have to do is you download the zip file and you install it on a USB, and it's gonna be a bootable USB. To do that, I used Balan Etcher because I was doing it on Mac. So we are getting Memtest 86 a free version. I'm using an app called Balana Etcher. And all you do is select the file and install it on your USB, select it and hit flash. But there's, for example, Rufus, you can use it on Windows. Basically just making an ISO file into a bootable USB. A lot of guides on how to do that. But once it's up and ready, you boot up into the USB. Show sure, how to do it on my system. All right, so to get it booted from USB, turn the power on and you're greeted by this menu. I tap on delete because that allows me to enter the setup. You can also press F11, but F11, I don't have that on this keyboard. So I go on delete and go all the way on the right. I go into the save and exit menu and I'm gonna select the Kingston partition one and try to boot from the USB. But look at that there. It is just loading up. So you give that a few seconds or we'll go ahead and boot. And you want to click on config. Just press on the right arrow, go to config and select it. Now get you into the main menu. And once it's booted, you're into this menu screen, it kind of tells you the processor, tells you RAM, tells you all this good stuff on there. And all you want to do is just start the test. You press S on your keyboard and it'll go ahead and start. So this is the screen that you're greeting with, it tells you your CPU, your speed. Something you could do if you do fail your test is you can always try to underclock your RAM. A lot of people out there, they overclock their memory and that could lead to errors. But yeah, that's beside the point. So you can see here, mine's running at the default setting, 1.2 volts, DDR4, everything's groovy. And on the left here, you've got all of these options and you can see the highlighted letter is letter you use on your keyboard. So you just want to press S to start the test and just let it do its thing. So far, so good. Passed one test, two tests on the third test and zero errors so far. Let's leave this running. Gonna take a few hours. So far it's taken two hours and we're on test number three. For me, my test took almost three hours to go through eight gigabytes of DDR4 RAM. Slow computer, but it's a long process. But thankfully, I found zero errors. So after two hours and 50 minutes, eight gigabytes of RAM has been thoroughly checked and I got a pass, a green pass. So I know that all my crashes that I've been experiencing with this has got nothing to do with the RAM. It's probably just software, so it's time to fix that issue instead. So what does that mean? It means I've ruled out the issue being related to RAM and it's probably software. So I'm probably gonna have to switch to another firewall. Maybe I'll try OpenSense. Stay tuned for a guide on how to do that. And uh, that's one less thing to worry about. And something interesting is when it comes to RAM, a lot of providers have a solid warranty. So if you are getting blue screens of death and you are getting all of these random crashes and stalls, check your memory, get a replacement if it's required and cruise on. And you do get a nice summary of the results. So 48 tests and there is no errors. So I'm actually relieved of that because this has a cheap RAM stick. So I was worried about that, but it looks to be good. All right, hope you guys found this video useful and enjoyed the show.